Okay, in this lesson video, we're gonna be reviewing differences of squares, um, and this is lesson 8-8. So for differences of squares, it's whenever we have two perfect square terms and they're being subtracted. So that's what the difference is from. It's always a minus sign and squares because they're two perfect squares, okay? So when we factor the difference of squares, it is not a trinomial that we're factoring now. It's a binomial but there's a shortcut to factoring it, right? Instead of trying to figure it out. What... All you have to remember is when you're factoring the difference of squares, you're gonna set up two binomials, just like we have every time we factored a trinomial, but to figure out what terms go in each uh, binomial, you're just gonna take the square root of the first term. That square root is gonna be the first term in your answer for each binomial and the square root of the second term. And that's gonna be your second term in each binomial. And then in each binomial, since they both match now with numbers, and it's the difference of squares, you're gonna have a plus sign in one of them and a minus sign in one of them. It does not matter if the minus sign is first and the plus sign is second, doesn't matter. As long as the two binomials match with the numbers, and then one has a plus sign, one has a minus sign. So I'm gonna show you how that works, cause that's like, okay, whatever, all right, this, none of this makes sense, but okay. I'll show you how it works. So if we start off with this and we actually multiply it out, I'll show you how we end up with a squared minus b squared. Okay, so how does it work? So if we start out with a plus b and a minus b, um, we're gonna use the FOIL method to, to multiply this out. So first, the first step is to multiply the first term in each binomial. So a times a is a squared. Okay, so we've got our first term here. The second step is to multiply the outer terms. So we've got one, two, three, four terms. The first and last are the outer terms. So a times negative b. So a times negative b is gonna be negative ab, right? So I'm gonna write negative a times b. Okay, so that's our second term. So then for our third term, first, outer, inner, now we have our four terms, we're gonna multiply the inside two terms, positive b times positive a, so we'll get positive ba, or which is the same thing as positive ab, so we've already got this, and then we're gonna add ab. So see what happens here? Our middle two terms are exact opposites, they're gonna end up canceling each other out, right? But let's keep going. So the very last step in the FOIL method is to multiply the last two terms in each binomial. So positive b times negative b. b times b is b squared. Positive times a negative is another negative. So we're gonna get negative b squared. Negative b squared, okay? So we end up with this guy, and then when we simplify it, our middle two terms cancel each other out, right? So this guy, negative a b, plus positive AB is equal zero. So what are we left with? A squared minus B squared, right? So there's our answer. A squared minus B squared, okay? So when we see, when we start with this, the difference of two squares, then we know if we wanted to factor it, all we're gonna do is have two binomials that look exactly the same, but one's gonna have a plus and one's gonna have a minus. And where do we get the numbers in those binomials? Take the square root of the first term, that's your first term, and the square root of the second term, that's your second term. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We're gonna do some examples now. Um, we're gonna do some examples of factoring and then we're gonna move on to solving by setting equal to zero, just like we have in the last few videos. So hopefully the more examples you see, the more this will make sense to you. I'm just gonna jump right in here to the exercises. All right, so first thing you wanna do is make sure that both numbers you're looking at, both terms, are perfect squares, right? So x squared, that's a perfect square. 81, that's a perfect square. So all we're gonna do is make two binomials. One's gonna have a plus sign, one's gonna have a minus sign, it doesn't matter which is which, okay? So for the first term, we're gonna take the square root of this term. So the square root of x squared is just x, right? the square root of x squared, 
this little square root and the square root symbol cancel each other out and the square root is just x. x times x is x squared. So x is our first term in each binomial. And then for the second term, we take the square root of the second number. Ignore the sign. The sign is part of the formula. When we see two perfect squares with a minus sign in between, you ignore the minus sign and you find the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and you plug those numbers in. So the square root of 81 is nine. So we're gonna put a nine here. Now we're gonna put a nine here. Now we're done, that's it. It's that easy, seriously. Same binomial twice. One has a plus, one has a minus. Otherwise they match. How do I come up with the terms? Square root, square root, okay? So let's just keep doing that. Here, do we have two perfect square terms? Yes, we do. 16 n squared, 16 is a perfect square. n squared is a perfect square. What did I take the square root of? I mean, what, uh, what did I multiply by itself to get 16 n squared? Well, the square root of 16 is four, and the square root of n squared is n. So just four n, the first term, in each of my binomials is gonna be 4n. I'm gonna have a plus and a minus. 4n, 4n. 4n times 4n is 16n squared, done. Okay, and then we wanna find the square root of the second term. Square root of 25 is five. So we put a five here and a five here. And we're done, that's it, that's all we're doing. Square root of the first term, square root of the last term. Have a plus, have a minus, you're done. Okay, let's do another one. Number four here. Now I highlighted a few of these because there's one extra step, but it's not a big deal. So we'll get to those in a second. 36 X squared minus 100 Y squared. Those are both perfect squares. Plus, minus, okay. Square root of 36 X squared. Square root of 36 is six and the square root of x squared is x. So our first term in both binomials is 6x. And then for the second term, 100y squared, the square root of 100y squared, square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of y squared is y. Remember, it's just what did you multiply by itself to get this number, 10. 10 times 10 is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. You can use your calculator for that as well, just not the variable part. Okay, so we put 10y, 10y. I hope this is seeming easy to you guys. Okay, one more easy peasy. They're both perfect squares. So we're gonna have our two binomials, one with a plus, one with a minus, doesn't matter which is which. Square root of 16a squared equals 4a. And the square root of 9b squared, leave off the negative, just 9b squared. Square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of b squared is b. So just 3b. 4a plus 3b, 4a minus 3b. If you wanted to check yourself, you can use the FOIL method, multiply everything together, and you'll see that the two middle terms cancel each other out. Because for the two middle steps, you're multiplying the outside terms and the inside terms. So the outside, 4a times negative 3b is going to be negative 12ab. The inside, 3b times 4a is positive 12ab. Negative 12ab plus 12ab, just cancel each other out. Okay, all right, next two, next three, I guess, is uh, they're not perfect squares, right? These are not, 72 is not a perfect square, 50 is not a perfect square, but I am subtracting and I notice that P is a perfect square. So maybe this is the difference of squares, right? So what can I do here? Well, can I factor a number out of these? Yeah, I can divide both of these by two. So what happens if I divide by two? What do I get? Well, I have to put that two out front, whatever I divide by, because I'm not getting rid of it, I'm just moving it. And then everything left over in parentheses after I divide. What's 72 divided by two? 36, and then I still have that P squared. Minus 50 divided by two is 25. Are these two numbers perfect squares? 
Yes, they are. So now my answer is going to have a two out front. And then I'll have my two binomials, one with a plus, one with a minus, and they'll match. But don't forget that two that you factored out front. Okay, so now we just do it exactly the same way. Square root of 36p squared. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of p squared is p. 6p, 6p. And then I find the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is just 5. So I put a 5 and a 5. Okay, so that one little extra step was just, okay, well, they're not both perfect squares, but can I make them perfect squares? Yes. Factor out a 2. Keep that 2 in front. Don't forget it. Don't write your answer like this because that is different than this, right? That's just, this is the answer of this factored. But we had this guy, so we had to do something with that too. You gotta leave it in front. Okay, so this one, I highlighted all the ones like this, so it's gonna be the same way. For this guy right here, I this is a plus sign, but I do have a negative number. So first thing I'm gonna do is flip-flop the order. So I'm gonna have two x squared plus negative two, which is just minus two, right? So now they're still not perfect squares. So can I divide them both by something? Yes, I can. I can divide them both by two. So I'll have that two out front. Everything left over after I divide in parentheses, that's x squared minus one. Are these both perfect squares? Yes. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of one is one, because one times one is one, right? So my answer is gonna be a two, my two binomials, one with a plus, one with a minus, doesn't matter which is which. The square root of this first term is x. The square root of this second term is one. Done, factored, done. Next one. Uh, oh, I should, oh yeah, this does, okay, so here, are they both perfect squares? Well, the number in front here is a one, the number here is 169, those are both perfect squares, but is x to the third a perfect square? No, it's not. So what can I factor out of both of these terms? An x. I can divide both terms by x. So then I'll rewrite this with the x out front. Everything left over after I divide in parentheses. 169x to the third divided by x. Remember when we divide um, bases, we subtract exponents. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So I get x squared, and then my minus sign, and then x divided by x is just one. So now they're perfect squares, right? So I'm gonna, my answer is gonna be x out front here, plus, minus, and then the square root of 169x squared is 13x, right? The square root of 169 is 13, the square root of x squared is x, so 13x, 13x. You can use your calculator. Let's see my calculator right here. On your calculator, you can use the square root button, so you could put 169 in, hit the square root button, you get a 13, and you know the square root of x squared is x. And then the square root of one, again, we just said that, is one. So there's our answer. So you always want to see, if you see a minus sign here with two terms, that should automatically make you think, okay, difference of squares. So then you look at the two terms. Are they both perfect squares? If they're not, see if you can factor something out to make them perfect squares. And then if you can't, then it's a whole different story. But typically, that's what it'll be. All right, last one here. Okay, so this one has a bunch of steps to it, but it still has the difference of squares in it. So the first thing I notice here is that all my numbers are 3, 6, 3, 6. So I can divide all of these by 3, right? They also all have x's in them. But I can't divide them all by x to the 4th because they're not all x to the 4th. Or x to the 3rd or x squared. But they all have at least an x in them. So I can divide everything here by 3x. So when I rewrite this, I put the 3x out front and everything left over after I divide in parentheses. 3x to the 4th divided by 3x is x to the 3rd because the 3's cancel and x to the 4th divided by x to the 1st. 4 minus 1 is 3. 
Uh, 6x to the third divided by 3x is positive 2x squared. 6 divided by 3 is 2. x to the third divided by x is x squared. Bring down my minus sign. 3 divided by 3, they cancel each other out. x squared divided by x is just x. And then bring down that last minus sign. 6x divided by 3x, the x's cancel. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, so now I got this guy. When I have four terms here, now I can group, right? So I'm going to group these first two, and I'm going to group these first two, okay? And so since I kind of kept that minus sign with my x, I'm going to just pretend like there's a plus sign in between there, okay? So now what can I factor out of these two? They both have x squared. Do they both have x squared? Yeah, they both have x squared. Okay, x squared. And out of these two, I can factor out... Remember when I do this, when I group and factor, I want to leave uh, the numbers I want to leave in parentheses need to match, right? Here, when I divide, it's going to have a plus sign. There's no negatives here. Here, they both have a negative sign. I don't want any negatives. So all I'm going to do is divide by negative 1. Okay, now just follow me. I know it's a lot of steps. Just keep following me. So I rewrite that 3x out front in parentheses. Now I'm going to simplify all this. So first thing I want to do is put the number I divided by in front. And then everything left over after I divide goes in parentheses. x to the third divided by x squared is x. 2x squared divided by x squared is just 2. Right? Everyone with me? And then I'm going to put this number in front. Minus 1, and everything left over after I divide in parentheses. Negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. So there's that, and then the whole thing is in parentheses. Okay, so now I'm still on the right track because I noticed that this and this match. Fantastic. That's what I wanted. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to run out of room here. I'm going to write uh, 3x out front. I'm going to write my repeated part first, x plus 2. And then I'm going to pull these two numbers over here and write them together, x squared minus 1. Do you see any differences of perfect squares here? Yeah. These guys aren't perfect squares, but what about this guy? Yes. The direction said to factor. Am I done factoring? No. I can simplify this because it's the difference of perfect squares. I'm gonna do it over here to the side because I ran out of room. Okay, so I know I'm gonna repeat this 3x plus x plus two. 3x times x plus two. And then I have to repeat that x squared minus one, but I'm gonna factor it, right? So I know when I factor difference of squares, I'm gonna have two sets of binomials, one with a plus, one with a minus. And then I just take the square root of each term. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 1 is 1. So this is my final answer, and I'm done. That was a whole lot of steps, right? But it kind of combines stuff that we did in the last lesson. So hopefully you were able to remember that. A whole lot of factoring. Nothing new, just a whole lot of factoring. So... More often than not, you'll see the more simple problems, but if you see a problem like this, don't freak out. You know how to do it. Just start one step at a time. What's the first thing I know how to do? Okay, great. What's the next thing I know how to do? Okay, look at it with fresh eyeballs every time. All right, now we want to move on to solving. So we're going to factor just like we did, but now we're going to set it equal to zero and solve. Okay, so starting with number one, first thing I know I want to do when I solve is set everything equal to zero. Right now, it's not equal to zero. So I need to subtract 49 from both sides of my equal sign so that I end up with these cancel and I get zero over here. And on this side, I get 81x squared minus 49. What do you notice about this? It's the difference of two perfect squares, right? 81x squared is perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. So I know when I factor this, I'm going to have two binomials that match, but one has a plus, one has a minus. The first term is the square root of 81x squared, which is 
9x. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of x squared is x. And this, the second term is the square root of 49, which is 7. Okay, but now I'm not done because I'm not just factoring. Now I'm solving. So now I want to set each of these equal to 0, right? So I'm going to set 9x plus 7 equal to 0 and 9x minus 7 equal to 0 and solve for x for each of those. So here I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides and then divide by 9. Here, I'll do it. Minus 7, minus 7, 9x equals negative 7. I'm going to do it up here. 9x equals negative 7, and then I divide by 9, divide by 9. x equals negative 7 over 9. There's one answer. For this guy, I had to add 7 to both sides. So I get 9x equals positive 7. And then I still have to divide by 9 on both sides. So I get x equals positive 7 over 9. So here's my two answers. If you want to write them in set notation, you can do little squiggles around them, remember? Boom, boom, negative 7 over 9, positive 7 over 9. You can do it that way. I'm perfectly fine with you keeping it like this. Okay, next one. Again, we have to have everything equal 0. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. 36n squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay, now I've got the difference of two perfect squares. This is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. So I'm going to write my two binomials. Okay, the square root of 36n squared. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of n squared is n. So the square root of 36n squared is 6n. And then the square root of 1 is 1. So here's my problem now. I'm going to use the zero product property. It says that when I multiply these two terms together, for the answer to be zero, at least one, of, if not both, of these have to be equal to zero. right? So we're going to solve for n if this term was zero, and we're going to solve for n if this term was zero. 6n plus 1 equals 0. 6n minus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides. Here I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Divide both sides by 6. So I get n equals negative 1 over 6. Divide both sides by 6. n equals positive 1 over 6. And this would be my answer. Right? So far so good. Next one, here, 25d squared minus 100 equals 0. I don't have to rearrange anything. <laughs> Excuse me. So I can just go ahead and I notice that both of these are perfect squares, and it's a minus sign in between them. So when I factor, my answer is going to be two binomials. They're both going to match, but one's going to have a plus, one's going to have a minus. The square root of 25d squared is 5d and the square root of 100 is 10. So here's this, then I set each of those equal to 0. 5d plus 10 equals 0. 5d minus 10 equals 0. Minus 10 on both sides. Add 10 on both sides. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. And then I can simplify one step more. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. 10 divided by 5 is positive 2. So here my answer is either negative 2 or positive 2. D has to be one of these two numbers for, where am I at? Where did I start at? This to be a true statement. I got lost with all my writing. Okay, next one. 9x to the third equals 25x, okay? Oh, I didn't highlight that one. First thing I want to do is get 0 on one side. I always want to leave my biggest exponent term positive, so I want to subtract the other term, minus 25x, minus 25x. These go away, 0. 
9x to the third minus 25x. Okay, now, are these both perfect squares? Not quite. 9 and 25 are, but x to the third is not x squared, right? So is there something I can divide both sides by? Yes, they both have an x. So I can divide by x. So I'm going to rewrite this. This number I'm dividing by, I'm going to put it out front. Everything left over after I divide goes in parentheses. 9x squared minus 25. And now I have the difference of two perfect squares. So I can rewrite them as two binomials one with a plus, one with a minus. Square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 25 is 5. Okay, so here I'm actually going to have three answers since I have three terms being multiplied together, right? Either this could be equal to 0, or this could be equal to 0, or this could be equal to 0, right? So my first possible answer choice is that x could equal 0. All right, so there's 1. I can't forget that at the end. My second possible answer choice is that 3x plus 5 equals 0. So then if I subtract 5 from both sides and then divide by 3, I get x equals negative 5 thirds. And then the last possibility is that 3x minus 5 equals 0. So then if I add 5 to both sides and divide by 3, I get x equals positive 5 over 3. So my three answer choices here, you can circle them, highlight whatever is easiest for you to do, but i got to see your answers. These are my three answer choices for x now. x can be any one of these for this to be a true equation, for it to be true. Okay? Number 9, we have four more problems. 2m to the third equals 32m, all right? That doesn't look like difference of squares at all, but it is two terms, so I'm going to get, since I'm solving, I want to get everything on one side of the equal sign and zero on the other, so I'm going to subtract 32m. So I get 2m to the third minus 32m equals zero, okay? Now, these are not perfect squares. We can tell that, but can I divide them both by something? Can I factor terms out of both of these? What are they both multiplied by that I can divide them both by now? They're both being multiplied. They were both terms that were multiplied by a 2 and an m. So I can divide them both by 2m, right? So when I rewrite this, I'm going to put that 2m out front and everything left over after I divide in parentheses. 2m to the third divided by 2m, the 2s cancel, and 3 minus 1 is m squared. Bring down that minus sign. 32m divided by 2m, the m's cancel. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Now I have the difference of two perfect squares. So I'm going to factor that. I know the shortcut. 2m goes out front. Don't forget about that. When I factor, I get two binomials. One with a plus, one with a minus. The first term in each binomial is the square root of this first term, so that's just m. And the second term is the square root of the second term, which is 4. Okay, so now for this to be a true statement, any one of these three terms has to be equal to 0. And we don't know which one, but we know one of them does. So what are the possible choices, with the possible answers for m to make one of these terms equal to zero, right? Or any of these terms equal to zero. Well, if 2m is equal to zero, divide both sides by two, m equals zero. There's one choice. If m plus four equals zero, then m minus four on both sides, m would have to equal negative four. And then if m minus four equals zero, Add 4 to both sides, and m would equal positive 4. So my three answers for this problem are either 0, negative 4, or positive 4. Okay? For all of these, we're looking for what m could be to make this a true statement. Now, normally, if you just came in and you sat down and you just had breakfast, and I said, good morning, happy Thursday, solve this problem, you'd probably look at it and go, wait, hmm? Excuse me, what? Hmm? 
right? But now you know what to do, okay? If you see a problem like this, first of all, see what you can divide both sides by. We can divide both sides by 2m. Then we'd be left with m squared equals, what did I see? 16, right? And then we could do what? We would have to do what? So for any of this to be true, we have to solve for m. Once I have the difference of squares, I know I can factor and solve. Okay, so let's do number 11. Now I've got a fraction, but fractions can still be perfect squares, right? They still can. 1 over 64 is a perfect square because 1 is a perfect square and 64 is a perfect square. If I took the square root of this guy, remember our rules of radicals say that when I have a fraction under a radical, I can separate the radical into the top and the bottom like that. So the square root of 1 is just 1, and the square root of 64, sorry, that was over, is 8. So the square root of 1 over 64 is 1 over 8, because 1 over 8 times 1 over 8 equals 1 over 64, right? Multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, done. So this is our square root. So just because it's a fraction, don't be afraid of it. Okay, before I do that, remember I want zero on one side, so I need to move this 49 over. I need to subtract 49 from both sides. So I get 1 over 64x squared minus 49 equals zero. I see that I have the difference of two perfect squares, so I'm going to have two binomials equal to zero. The square oh, with a plus sign and a minus sign. And I just said the square root of 1 over 64 is 1 over 8. And then the square root of x squared is x. So both of these have 1 over 8x as the first term. The square root of 49 is 7. So I'm here. Now I can solve for 0 easily. I'm going to set this equal to 0. And I'm going to set this equal to 0. I don't have a lot of room. Uh, 1 over 8x plus 7 equals 0. Minus 7 on both sides, 1 over 8x equals negative 7. And then remember, to get rid of a fraction, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. That's one of those old rules in algebra, but you can't forget any of the rules in algebra. We always use them, right? So I'm going to multiply by 8 over 1. So I have to multiply this side by 8 over 1. So this 8 over 1 cancels with 1 over 8. Negative 7 times 8 equals negative 56. So x can equal negative 56. That's one of our choices. The other choice for x, 1, 1 8 x minus 7 equals 0. I'll try and solve it up here. 1 8 x minus 7 equals 0. I need to add 7 to both sides. And then I have to get rid of that 1 8. So I multiply by 8 over 1. Multiply by 8 over 1. These cancel, and I'm left with x equals 7 times 8 is 56. So x is going to either equal positive 56 or negative 56. Okay, two more. Almost done. You're doing great. 3b minus 27b equals 0. Um, well, they're not perfect squares, but I see a minus sign and I see stuff that could be perfect squares, right? So what can I divide both of these terms by? Looks like I can divide them both by 3 and b. So I'm going to rewrite this with the 3b in front. Everything left over after I divide in parentheses, and it's still equal to 0. 3b to the third divided by 3b. The 3s cancel. b squared divided by b, or sorry, b to the third divided by b is b squared. Bring down my minus sign. 27 divided by 3 is 9. b divided by b just cancels. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I have the difference of two perfect squares. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3b here, here equals 0 plus minus. First square root is b. Second square root is 9. Uh, uh, sorry, 3. And so now I have three different terms I have to set equal to 0 to solve. 3b equals 0. Divide both sides by 3. 0 divided by anything is 0. b plus 3 equals 0. Minus 3 on both sides 
b equals negative 3 and b minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides, b equals 3. So my answers there are 0, negative 3, and positive 3. Make sure you're showing all your work. Last problem, another fraction one. Okay, first thing I notice here, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square, but they are on different sides of the equal sign. So I need to get 0 here, subtract 121. So I get 9 over 25m squared minus 121 equals 0. Awesome. So now I have the difference of two perfect squares. So I'm going to have my two binomials, one with a plus, one with a minus equals 0. Square root of the first term. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 25 is 5. And square root of m squared is m. So my first term is 3 over 5m. The square root of 121 is 11. And use your calculator. Okay, so now I set each of these equal to 0. 3 fifths m plus 11 equals 0. 3 fifths m minus 11 equals 0. And I solve. Minus 11 on both sides, 3 fifths m equals 11. I have to get rid of 3 fifths, so I need to multiply it by the reciprocal. Just flip it upside down. Do the same thing here. These cancel. m equals, this is like 11 over 1, so 11 times 5 is 55. 1 times 3 is 3. Oops. Here. Add 11 to both sides, 3 over 5m equals 11. Multiply both sides by 5 thirds to get that fraction to cancel. These cancel. Remember when you multiply fractions, you go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. m equals 55 thirds. You know what I, this was supposed to be negative 11. Sorry, I left the negative sign off here. So my answer here should have been negative 55 over 3. And then technically you should go ahead and simplify. Um, 3 goes into 54 19 times, I believe. No, 20. No, 3 goes into, yeah, 54 18 times. So this would be negative 18 and a third. And this one would be positive 18 and a third. That's just reviewing simplifying fractions. That's not part of this lesson, so go back and review that if you need to. If you have any questions on difference of squares, I know I am throwing a lot, a lot of important information at you this week. I understand that. Every week will not be this heavy. Every week has not been this heavy. However, this week it is, so you are responsible for all of this. Oops, that's the wrong lesson. It's geometry. I read it your first page. You are responsible for all of this, um, but I know it's a lot. So reach out to me for questions. I hope you guys all show up to the um, Q&A tomorrow, and I'm happy to work through this stuff with you guys. All right? Thanks.